commandments of the prophets. A commandment of the prophets is the is the prophet Zechariah. Uh, Zechariah was a prophet. Zechariah and Enos, I guess. Oh, this is good. Yeah. Shavi'i, 
means the seventh month, and a Siri means the tenth month. And of course, you all know by now everyone really should be fluent in all the numbers and people learn those numbers and know them appropriately. So V was three weeks or two weeks ago, the seventh day of Tammuz. Tammuz is the fourth month. The Tom Kamishi coming up. Bishop Av, the month of Av is the fifth month. Tom Shvi is Tom Gedalia, and that's in the month of Tishrei. That's the seventh month. And Asar and, uh, and, uh, and Tom Asiri is the tenth of Tevez in the tenth month Asar of Tevez. So I'm giving you both the month and the date so you know what those fasts are and uh, when they occur. And what do they commemorate? So the first one, which we commemorated two weeks ago, commemorated five tragedies. The breaking of the wall around the Ushland and the destruction of the second base of English. The cessation of the Korban Tumid, the daily sacrifice during the siege of the first base of English. The burning of a sacred door by Apostolos, the placing of an idol in the base of English, and the breaking of the first book of by Moshe of Ibn Which one do you think came first? Anybody? The breaking of the oh, Okay, Jesus. I see. He knows everything. Everybody else struggling. Obviously, the first thing that was the first thing that came was the most of the tragedy of the Luchos because he saw the Golden Gap. And then other situations occurred throughout the centuries. For us, the most significant part is number eight. When the second destruction, 2,000 years ago, the walls surrounding Yushalayim were reached. They broke. They, they, they were stormed by the Romans. And uh, three weeks later, they burned to make some English. So Khamishi, the fifth month of Av, commemorates the most tragic day of the year, and that will be next week. Hashem's decree preventing the Jews from entering Israel because of the sins of the spies. That night when the spies returned to the negative report about Eretz of Swell, the people and cried for nothing. Hashem said, I will give you what to cry about. He declared this day of Pesach Tishbah, and they have sadness and tragedy for what? That's next week. Um, of course, we all know that the uh, Shia has imminent, and some say that we should come around around the time of the uh, of, of, uh, of uh, Tishbah. That being the case, so clearly, uh, we, we want to. Uh, to, um, to uh, uh, hope that maybe uh, we won't remember how fish it goes. Maybe we'll celebrate the world and say, yes. So yesterday, uh, we were uh, watching with Lula Lessig. So it says that we were, uh, we were studying with Rabbi uh, Fadiman yeah. yesterday. And in one of the commentaries, it says that the base of Nikita is going to be built you know, by the Jews, but then it says that Hashem is going to be. So, is it the merit and then the like instant building, or is it the building because of the merit? Are you asking me because you think I'm a tarot? Yes. <laughs> the answer is I'm not. Uh, how is Hashem going to do it? When do you do it? Uh, I'm a simple little teacher. <laughs> Frankly, most of what I'm going to teach is just the what the guy observed. What's going to happen? When it will happen? There's a story that once was told by a, a hard, terrible a terrorist. His name was Yasser Arafat. Troy was told. That bad person who, uh, who uh, terrorized Jews, you know that guy? He went to a fortune teller. And he asked the fortune teller, what's going to be my future? He could tell this, he said, she said to him, You're gonna die on a Jewish holiday. How do you know that? He said, She says it's easy. Any day you die, it's gotta be a Jewish holiday. You like it, too. <laughs> anyway, um, she has to come today, tomorrow. But we are new, we do know. Bishop of us will be taken someday. 
So in the meantime, we will, we are in 180 degrees difference, we will commemorate the sadness and the tears. So we have to be able to learn our emotions, sort of a balance our emotions. <coughs> Ten days of 
very heavy, intensive prayer, atonement, chuba, returning to God, etc. We should be in the hole right now. I mean, we're not we're, we're two months away from one court. We're two months away from the green tree. It's going to happen next year. And uh, therefore, it's important for every one of us to, to, uh, to be conscious of that. And then Kippur, of course, is the, is the biggie. We're going to learn some differences in halacha as well. Number seven, the 17th of Thomas, Tzom, Gedani, and Asar, and David, the people's stringency. The best of Esther is a more lenient nature. This is the most stringent nature. So let's put a young Kippur aside. The most significant from the Torah, return to Chuba, the days of all. Um, and realize the other five has been a bottom. The lead, the most lenient is the one of Esther. <coughs> the other four, the most strictest is Tishabov. Well, we're going to see some dish similarities between Tishabov and the Mutipa shortly. The observance of any fast day with Rabbanan falling out on Shabbos is postponed to the next day, Sunday, except for the fast of Esther, which is pushed back to Thursday because the next day is important. You can't fast them for If Yom Kippur comes out of Shabbos, Yom Kippur supersedes, and you fast since Yom Kippur is from the Torah, and in a way it's been the Shabbos, it's called a double Shabbos. The word Shabbos means to stop. In Israel, unfortunately, they use it to describe a word strike, a word stoppage. They call it Shabbita, or it's Shabbat. <laughs> it's a real kind of silly usage, but that's what they do. Because uh, one more day, whatever they were describing for the working. But Shabbat means to stop, means not to stop work, but on your keyboard, we stop eating. What it means basically is Shabbat is a stoppage from this world. So yesterday we did nothing in the world, he says. We didn't drive, we didn't use cell phones, and, uh, we didn't go here, go there, do this, do that. Uh, we were outside the world. I know before, it's totally outside the world. Then you didn't eat food. Then you didn't eat. So that was a double Shabbat. Therefore, it overrides Shabbat. And you all know that Shabbat required to eat, to make a delightful day out of it. Especially so, three meals. That means basically, the Torah is implying that a Jew should be satisfied on two meals a day. This uh, American indulgence of three is American indulgence. That's why all Americans like that. So, oh, I don't know how that is. Reality is, is that two meals should be sufficient. A late morning, an early, uh, a, 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 an early evening, and that's done. Therefore, Shabbat becomes special, stands out, it requires three meals. Of the three meals, Friday night, Shabbos day, Shabbos night today, the most significant may very well be spiritually. That's third meal. And that third deal is so important that it should be observed. And basically, with two chalas, like any other Shabbat meal, for that matter. Very important, the third meal. Now, comes a fast day, this has got to be pushed because you can't buy the Shabbat. Except Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur overrides Shabbat. So now let's look about our fast tradition. So, in regards to Tisha B'Av, this year it's on Shabbat. So, what are the, what are the, the implications of this year's Tisha B'Av? So, to start off, I want to once again re, 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 re emphasize the importance of the third meal. Because the third meal, I'm not going to continue the debate just yet. I'm going to stop here for a quick second. I don't, uh, yeah, um, well, let's go to number nine, and then, and then, and then I'll, and now I'll start to uh, the talk. Uh, other three of the four fasts, the best of Esther, one may wear leather shoes, use oil and ointments, have marital relations, wash hands and face. I know mm -hmm. more, and this about, uh, which God has shown before, the above are all forbidden, and then known as the five million, the five afflictions. Um, Okay, number 10, on three of the four fasts, and the fast of Esther, the fast begins in the morning, and you know, Kippur and Bishabab, a full 25 hour fast beginning the night before. Uh, we'll stop here for a second now, and we'll talk about this year. Um, 
You got Shabbat. You got to eat. No wives to Shabbat. There's no time on it. There's no wives to Kippur, but no wives to this one. Yet on the other hand, this Shabbat is a very uh, significant uh, issue because uh, um, we have an issue of the nine days. Nine days, of course, have begun as a Friday. And these nine days are forbidden and meat, wine, bathing, uh, swimming, uh, wearing uh, fresh and long clothes, uh, shaving, a lot of people shaving already, haircuts, the marriages, the parties. It's, it's a sad time. Um, the exception to the rule of meat and wine is Shabbat. Shabbat will override the nine days. So yesterday we had meat and wine. This coming Shabbat is meat and wine as well. But that's kind of funny to think about. Because Shabbat, Tishaba falls on Shabbat. That means, okay, we're facing the next day. We all agree, right? The Sunday. But if you think about it, say, I'm eating meat, drinking wine, celebrating Shabbat on what is actually Tishaba. It's got to make you a little funny. You're like, oh, wow, what, 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 what are you doing? I feel weird. I feel sorry. I feel so strange. Forget, forget the fact that it's, it's nine days. It's Tisha I'm eating meat. Not only am I not eating, not only am I, am I um, eating on Tisha but I'm eating meat on Tisha And I'm having a festive meal on Tisha And drinking wine on Tisha And singing songs on Tisha B'Av. Is it funny? Yeah, no fun. <laughs> well, let's survive if we don't eat meat. Can we hear Shabbat? Well, this is a good one. I know that. I thought. I don't want to do it. Yeah, not for the eating. Tisha Bob starts with Shabbat. Let's start Saturday. Okay, let's talk about that. Let's get on the loop. Let's get on the loop. Let's. Why not? On Shabbat, Shabbat to, to, to prepare for the fast. The end of Shabbat. TV or fish or, or, or drink wine or whatever. In other words, Shabbat overrides. Correct? You just said that. When it overrides, so the best goes on Sunday. But since this Shabbat is a 25 hour deal, it begins when? Saturday night. We have golf. But there's no have golf. Because you can't have enough golf with wine. Correct? Can't have dog with anything for that matter. Now, let's say I've gone last night. Can you make a dog last night on wine for ranges? The answer is no. Oh. How many people made on wine last night? <laughs> <laughs> and you're wrong. Why are you wrong? Because there's a nine days. Oh, really? Yeah, Shabbat's over. Shabbat's over. And you're doing a dog. Well, you can't yeah. drink wine anymore. Yeah. What do you do? No technicality in a little of uh, a few minutes. You say, what do you do? So you can make a dollar on beer. What about the laundry? Or on what? Like a, what is that laundry? <laughs> what would you do? You know, a lot of the laundry is on the drink that we didn't drink. What was that? So we didn't actually do it. Okay, so you drank. What's the difference? So the point is that beer is. Beer is okay. Uh, milk is okay. Now let's say on a given dish above any. Let's put it down. Uh, on dish above, uh, let's say any any uh, uh, um, any dish any any much uh, of the year. Any any Saturday night. Any Saturday night that you're uh, going to uh, to, to uh, have Abdallah, If you don't have grape juice or wine. Can you use beer or milk? Yes. Can you also use like whiskey or vodka? Well, if you want to try that, you can drink the whole gang of whiskey and vodka. That's fine. Perfect. Perfect. You want to sleep back tonight? But the, the point is, yeah, so the point is, is that you, you have to have you, you have to have uh, some beverage. Wine is off for me. But you can't have wine last night because wine is what it's on. Um, Shabbat is over for nine days. So then you should use the beer. But what can you do in this company Saturday night, Abdallah? Uh, Zero. Because you're fasting. 
What if I have God? Let's figure it out. Let's figure it out. Let's examine Jewish law and figure out how we're going to do this. So, number one, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure how to deal with Shabbat. Now, Shabbat is Tishabah. And I'm feeling real weird because it's Tishabah, but I'm eating and drinking and having a good time. Now, we also said that there are five afflictions on Tishabah, like 54, right? Not just eating and drinking, but four more. So, eating and drinking are pushed aside. Can I push aside the leather shoes? No. Do I have to wear, do I have to wear regular leather shoes on Shabbat or Tishabab shoes? No. No regular shoes. Shabbat. If you wear a non leather shoe, that shows that you're in mourning and there's no mourning on Shabbat. Even if you're in the middle of the seven days of your own personal grief of a loss of a loved one, there's no Wearing a non leather shoe to show up. My shoes are Shabbat. <clears throat> now, okay, so I'm going to eat, I'm going to wear leather shoes. What about the prohibition of, of washing? Well, I don't take a shower in Shabbat anyway. Why not? Considered water. Big water. So the answer is most of the time, the reason is because of hot water. In other words, we are not permitted to open up a hot water force on shops. Why not? Because so hot water comes from a hot water tank. Cold water comes into the tank, and the tank keeps it up. If you remove hot water from that tank and leave a little gap, new cold water flows right in and heats up. And that's called the cooking on Javis. The flame gets higher also. Huh? The flame gets higher also. Okay, also So therefore, you've got a problem here that you can't use hot water. Can I think a cold shower in Shabbat? The answer is, not really, because why? Because it's an easy temptation to do turn on the hot water. Ah, that's cool. Right, so then that, and that's your, that's your there's error. That's a decree of the Rabbana that makes the rule strict that you can't use cold water. Cold chat. Can you um, um, uh, wash yourself in some manner, uh, 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 body part by body part? In other words, about your hands and then your hands and your feet, but one by one, you bet you can do, but not a full immersion. Uh, can you go swimming on Shabbat? No, no, why not? You can't dry off. Too close to bathing. No, you can't dry off. You can't dry off. With a towel. You can't swim. You can't swim. You're all saying the right thing. But let me tell you one more thing. Okay. So you got a major problem here. A more significant problem is your bathing suit. You are washing. No washing. You're putting garment, bathing suit, whatever, in water. You're not allowed to put any garments in water on Shabbat. If I get a stain on Shabbat, can I take a towel, a wet towel, and wash it off? No. That's, that's laundry. Now, you want to go swimming without a bathing suit? <laughs> <laughs> So there's no, uh, but can you at least wash your hands and face on Shabbat? Sure. Can you wash your hands and face on Dishabah? No. No. So you see that the afflictions that apply to Dishabah do not apply to Shabbat at all. You can eat, you can wash, you can wear leather shoes, and you're supposed to wear leather shoes. What about anointing with oil? No. So we all know that anointing uh, with the liquid oil is not a problem, even though it's Dishabah, because it's Shabbat. But can you anoint yourself with creams on Shabbat? No, that's all smoothing or spreading, right? We all talked about what mommies do when baby has a diaper rash, right? You want to put some 
uh, maybe some uh, Vaseline on it, but you can't rub the Vaseline and make it stush. So therefore, what it's supposed to do is put the Vaseline on the diaper and then put the diaper up on the dish, and that's you have avoided uh, smearing. Smearing is a major violation of Shabbat. So therefore, comes to why, the why, why is smearing? It's one of the thirty nine. Which which one? Of the no, look it up. It's one of the thirty nine. Yes. Uh, what about for like a prescription ointment from a doctor saying that oh you have to put on a uh, no it's no prescription ointment. How can you think? No, that's correct. Oh, okay. Unless you're in danger. Unless you're in danger. Yeah. Going back to the hot water, what if you have like a tankless uh, water system? On the roof. On the what? On the roof? No, the tankless no. is no, just like it's always hot. hot. But that's yeah, it's always, always hot. hot. Yeah. 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 Most likely, you'll be uh, most likely, again, I'm not actually 100% sure, but most likely, the hot water will still be forbidden because. If you did one hot water here, you need hot water over there. And because it's easier to get this up, rather than make it a bit off the off, off that. I'm not going to boil water before she got it. What? Oh, hot water. Oh, so you got hot water preserved. Right. And you're not going to make new hot water. And you take it out. So of some people do that. Some people do that for lot for washing dishes. Or baby. Or baby. Right. right. So if you have, let's say, a hot water bottle for that, so then you can use that. Um, because there's no fear of using any uh, any other water. <laughs> well, that's a question also. That's open for discussion. But the question is, what about what about the fifth prohibition? What's the fifth prohibition of the five afflictions of fish about? Marital relations. Now, we all know that a Friday night is the night of romance. We all know it. that's the pleasure of Shabbat. That's the joy of us in life. If nothing else, all we want to do is to do the work. Unless he's busy learning the Torah. He hasn't got proper time to give to his wife. He should. At least he should give his wife Friday night. Now it comes out that this is Shabbat. Can a man do the right to Friday night? Well, it's in Shabbat. It overrides. Not so simple. Not so simple. Not so simple. Why? In as much as it's still visual, the other things were permissible because they were public. Since this is private, it could be therefore that it should be observed as visual and it won't be a display of disregard for Shabbat at all. And so to Machlokas, it's a dispute amongst the great scholars and the um, dispute is between the Svartan and the Ashkenazi. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the solar panels. <laughs> the Spartans say, the Spartans say it's okay. <laughs> the Ashkenazim say, no, no. <laughs> however, however, the Ashkenazim make one means. Uh, if it's the night that the wife comes home for dinner, how important is the night that a wife comes home for dinner? It's yeah. important. As a mara, as a wedding night itself. The night that a woman is has to go to mikvah was such an important night. And that's why she has to calculate. Woman has to calculate carefully her days to know when the need is over and when commencing the seven days of inspection. And that situation carries with it tremendous responsibility so that in fact we don't. Let's say resume relations before the period is over, but at the same time, the same responsibility not to commence later. There shouldn't be one extra day that is imposed upon the couple in separation. The couple have the right to be together and to enjoy each other to the extent where, if in fact that's the night that the woman comes home from Big Bug, that's a physical night. On regular people, of course not. But this one, because it's about Shabbat, then you can have a relationship. Now, the interesting thing about this, of course, is that what about how, what about make on Friday night? Now, obviously, if you don't live in a neighborhood that has a mikvah, you have a problem. Um, when I moved into North Hollywood, it was a very big problem, such a such a, 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 a 
uh, I uh, and, and my other colleagues spearheaded the project. That evening we get a big gun, or move it, get half down, I'm just staying alive, move it out. Ridiculous. I was going for five minutes, she delay, wait, because she has to drive into the city. Those days, every wife had to drive into the city for a mikvah, whatever her mind was. And if her night was Friday night, we had to wait for Saturday night, which is really a wrong thing because it disturbs the proper marital relationship of a husband and wife because they should be together when they when it's appropriate. And so therefore, if in fact, if in fact the, uh, um, the community, not a neighbor, uh, the neighbor, it's not a neighbor, it shouldn't be left there. Shouldn't let the neighbor put it over there. And um, we built the middle, of course, by Hashem, now three mitzvahs, but I will tell you that if it's Friday night, so the wife doesn't drive to the mikvah, she walks to the mikvah. It's Shabbat. Um, obviously, going to the mikvah is a very private, personal thing. And so, therefore, you know, women go just after their life and, um, and immerse uh, in, in privacy, of course. And then return home, uh, walking home, perhaps not in the same direction where, let's say, the men are walking home from shul. Um, that's not where the woman wants to walk. She walks in a different street. To get their home for Friday night. But there's no question that Friday night, if it's that's the night of the mikvah, you have to go at the candlelight. Of course, the woman has to make a preparation. She has to go to the shower extensively. And you can't show on Shabbat. So all that showering, all that preparation has to be done before candlelight. And then at the candlelight, you go to the, to the mikvah and resume the way to the In any event, on this Shabbat night, that is acceptable, even according to that night. Now, um, let's remind ourselves that besides the five afflictions that we all enumerated, and we all should memorize, there are at least four other things we need to know about Mishabov that are in addition to the Mishabov uh, the, the observance that is not duplicated in Yom Kippur. And that's because the mindset, the attitude of Yom Kippur is a happy one. Cleansing. I'm getting rid of all my sins. I'm doing the shuba. I'm atoning. I'm a big person. I can look forward to a new year. Who cares about food? <laughs> Who cares about anything? I just want to be. I, I'm enjoying the people. It's about different. It's about kind of distinctively. There's a time of sadness. It's a time of, of commemoration. Don't lose your mind. It's a natural. Now, four things need to be added in order to remember. This usual experience of Mishra, and we'll all see it next week. One is you do not sit on regular chair, you sit on the floor. For well, mourners, sit on the floor. You lose a loved one, you sit on the floor. Right? Of course, you have some people, some people bring little, uh, little, uh, little chairs if they want to help them uh, um, be able to sit low. The key is not the, so much the discovery, the key is being low. That's, that's the, the message. Of the other of the, of the, of small chairs. And so, therefore, certainly um, the observance should be um, and, and you, you should bring some, as I said, pillows or other things. That do, they should be, you know, just come home uncomfortable. But we do have to observe the point of sitting low, and that's what we're going to do next Sunday morning. And we'll start our service uh, at 10 30. Um, the 10 30 time next Sunday will be a preparatory time, and we'll actually commence the service at 11. But there'll be some preparatory instructions at 10:30 that I will give. So it's worthwhile to come early and get ready. Um, another thing, oh, by the way, on that on that sitting low, that also applies to Saturday night. But the sitting low ends midday Sunday at 1 p.m. midday. That's when the morning begins to subside. And so uh, we're going to um, uh, have so that. Right, minimum is one third. We'll be that way in a half hour after the day. To, have to, to be able to pray the chah early in the day, right? We have to wait till midday plus a half hour. So midday is chatzot. Chatzot usually is 12, but because of the daylight savings time, it's 1. So therefore, one thirty is the time where you can pray the chah. A lot of shul are going to pray early in the chah at 1 30. Um, Things subside after 1 130. For instance, 
On Vishabal, we do not put on Tali, but I put on Tali. Because of the glory, beauty. And uh, we can't feel beautiful on, on such a day. Um, even our clothes reflect that. Our clothes are, first of all, the shoes are obviously reflected. That's a non Shabbat shoe, non leather shoes. But um, even the, 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 the shirts are perhaps a longer than that. And the, the, the clothes that we wear are not the uh, festive, but only in any place. I don't say you have to wear black, but it's not festive. It's good with that. I have a question, yeah. but it's, hold on. You know what? That, you know, I'm just trying to understand the you know, talus, we get that excuse and all. But for men, does that also include tzitzis? No, good question. You do put on the tzitzis because it's not public. Yeah. Then you're sure, but you don't make the bracha on the Oh, no bracha. No bracha on the at all. Put it on, yep. right? Um, but, and then later on, Pali with a bracha yeah. and Pili with a bracha after midday at 1 30. Do you agree uh, on the tzitzis with a bracha? No, no, no. no. You, 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 you it's it's all already. Yeah. No questions. No, you answered it because I was going to ask about this pillar. Good enough. So, here it is Saturday night, um, and I've got a transition. In the dish above. That's so strange. Ordinarily, how do I transition to dish above on a regular year? Very simple. By midday of the day before dish above, I'm already getting into the zone, so to speak. But I can't do that on Shabbat. The transition's got to be drastic. Me. Um, generally speaking, we have a last meal before dish above called the sad meal. Not offset. The sad meal consists of one cooked item only. What's that one cooked item called? An egg. And the base. Why an egg? Because an egg is round, right? And round gives you or teaches you the cycle of life. It teaches you sometimes you're up, sometimes you're down. Sometimes hostility, sometimes it's sadness. Circle of life. Mornings are required for most people and eat eggs. We eat eggs the day before the show, in the afternoon. Some have a custom, that's true, to dip the eggs in ashes. So they make a, take a little fire and burn a little paper and make a little ash. So they dip the egg in the ash, so to speak. Uh, using ashes is a good sense of, of, of fire or burning or destruction. When a man gets married on the day of his kupa, before he goes into the kupa, they take some ashes and put it on his forehead with a stone. Again, to remember the Now, um, this sad meal just before the uh, mourner's meal, called just before this meal, uh, is also eaten on a bar. But all this does not occur this year. This, this sad meal does not happen. Because it's Shabbat. So we have to eat our regular third meal. And it should be as delicious <coughs> and as accepting and as meatful and a full of meat and wine as any other Shabbat meal. You can't compromise the Shabbat. Um, so what do we do? So we, of course, by delaying the shit to Shabbat, we have this creepiness about of knowing that it's and going through all this festive festive motions of Shabbat. Maybe it's not so creepy. Because you know why? Maybe we pushed off Tishabah one more day. Maybe it won't come. Maybe we shall come before Tishabah. One more day. Maybe it will come. So therefore, there's this essence of feeling about eating when Tishabah is almost, and it's happened on, you know, whenever it goes to Shabbat, like this year. And you feel, you know, someday there's really going to be a celebration of Mishra. And this day's going to turn from mourning 180 degrees to joy and celebration. And we have to feel that as we're celebrating our Shabbat, this coming Shabbat. Now, it's Saturday night, and we eating that festive the third meal. When do we make the transition? The answer is sunset. Now, sunset means that that's when the day's over. At least from one perspective, you know, it's still daylight, but it's over to the extent where, let's say it was Friday, 
At sunset, we light candles 18 minutes before that. This is the red Shabbat. And therefore, we have to feel this Saturday night, fish loves coming in as of sunset. So whatever you're doing in the Subash Kushi, which can be a regular Subash Kushi meal is, you bench and finish your celebration, your, your, your commemoration of Shabbat at sunset. What happens now? Well, what happens now is that I still can't put on my regular, my, 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 uh, my tennis, my, uh, my bishop of shoes. Why? Because it's still technically Shabbat also. It's a little bit of a strange situation. And so, therefore, what's happening is, is that I will have to wait till nightfall, about 42 minutes. At nightfall, when Shabbat is technically over, and I should be doing half the lot, which I won't, I take off the shoes. Wait a second. I gotta eat the shoe. How do I eat the shoe? By like 42 minutes, shoes are already starting to die, migrate, and starting to fill up service. Some people actually what they do in many schools is they make the fish of shoes and leave it in the shoe on Friday morning, Friday afternoon. And they go to school Friday night. So you leave the shoe, the, the fish of shoes in shoe. And then when you come back to school after sunset on Saturday night, you switch the moment nightfall hits. And the moment it's dominating my uh, you don't want to disturb the Shabbat with a display of sad shoes. And so, therefore, the question is, how do we get the shoe on time on Saturday night? Particularly if you if you look close, you walk, you walk, it's fine. But if you don't, it could be sometimes that the shoe might delay, so you can hop in the car. The Shabbat is over, but you gotta wait 42 minutes. You gotta wait those 42 minutes. Then, how do you end the Shabbat? Well, usually, you end it by saying, you can bring up it, you really don't have to. But you do have to also make a Havdalah. So, how do you make Havdalah? There are three ways. One is with a cup of wine. So, what everybody does is, we're talking about that. <laughs> this is about life, right? The other is to say a prayer in the Amidah. In the Amidah prayer, the fourth brother. As an inclusion for Hamzalah. On the Amidah artist? Sorry? The Amidah artist? Yeah. The, the regular Avi Shochol has an addition to the fourth brother, and that's the Dachon and Hon. I'm going to be teaching a prayer, a prayer of prayer later this month, um, which will give you more, more of a structure of it. But understand that the 18 or 19, 18 plus 1, 19 brothers that we do in Shochol X-ray, we do have additions and the different occasions. On every Saturday night, we'll add a fourth bracha. I was making a 20 on it. But it's not a bracha in itself, it's an insertion. And so inserted into the fourth bracha is a hadar. It's called atachonantan. If you don't get a chance to do it, or you forget it, or women who don't play our beat, they can do a formula which is called baruch, amadil, and kodesh to And that four words. And it's Shabbat technically up into the car. But you can't do it. Even if the 42 minutes is over, it doesn't help you. It doesn't help you unless you say those four words. So you gotta wait for two, you gotta wait for two points for 42 minutes, right? And the bracha and, and, and the and the wording, baruch, amabdubin kodesh the whole. And when you do that, then you can get into the car and go. And go for uh, go to the uh, to the shore. If you're sitting in the car, the chair is not low, it's high, not a problem if you have no choice. But once you get to the shore, you sit low. And um, uh, again, if someone's a bit healthy and can't sit low, then they have to sit up right, you know, that's acceptable. Um, but in addition to the um, to the uh, uh, uh this thing of the low seats, we also have no greetings. No shalom, no hello, how are you? No. <coughs> Someone doesn't know the rule, you don't want to be rude, you deny the person, not a soft thing. Um, the other thing that is going to be, and then, then we do, and by all the way, all these things are going to suspend by Tishima midday. By Sunday at one o'clock, we still, we, we still probably don't greet, but we can sit up regular, and the removal of the cover of the ark called the parochia. It's also done on this model to display and disgrace for the Torah. The 
door not being covered, it's a disgrace, it's exposed, and the government is covered the whole way. It's shameful, and that's how we conduct the Kishibo service until midday on Sunday. The Rokos comes back, we sit up regular, we put on Talos and Phil, and not a minute at 135. Yes. Rabbi, during those uh, 42 minutes, can we still have the Malala Malka? No. No? No. No, no, no. Stop after sunset. Don't move. No more mouth this week. What about a dollar? Well, uh, let's, that's right. Let's talk about a dollar. For one thing, I thought last week of all this. No, you memorize it. These two components really become a fourth one when you add the rock of dollar to it. And you simply do this. Put your hands on your mouth. Right? Put your hands on your mouth. This is the bracha for one. On your nose, here's the bracha for the spices. On your eyes, here's the bracha for the fire. On your mind, here's the bracha for the dog. And the ability to use your mind to be able to make distinctions. And that's the, same. That, that's the whole easy way of remembering the order of the dog. First, you make a bracha on one. Drink. Then you make a rubber spices and spices, not spices, spices, and you smell, you smell the spices, smell the spices. Okay, <laughs> then if you do that, then you use your eyes. This is the fire. How you take your fingers, cut them like this, and create inside as you can see a little shadow. And you'll see that there's a difference between light and dark. And that is that the side you put it in the candle. I just went on and played around with fingers all day. It's really something of meaning. And then you make the bracha, the distinction between between what? Holy and holy, 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 not holy, it's one. Day and night. Day and night. Shabbat, the weekdays. And Israel and the nations. And that's what we have to be up for, not there. It's good. Okay. <laughs> we have four, not bad. And so, of course, we have the idea that that this is not going to happen this Saturday night. But it can't be one. Right. But you got to make a fella. So how do you make a fella? You got to make a distinction. I mean, you, you have to work. The answer is you say either that prayer with the Amidah, like I said, in the fourth bracha, or you say the four words: Baruch, Amadil, Ben Kodesh, the whole five words. And that allows you to do work at Shabbat. I mean, work every Shabbat. <laughs> now, on every, on every Shabbat, I think you're On every Shabbat, in theory. In theory. Yeah, I'm in theory. Good. Good. Absolutely. Eventually, however, you have to have Abdullah over a cup of wine for another reason. Because you can't eat or drink until you have Abdullah over a cup of wine. Not permitted to eat or drink from the moment sun sets until, unless you're in the middle of the Sudash Lishi. If you're in the middle of Sudash Lishi, you can finish whenever you finish, bench, and then make out the lot. That's how we But you can't do, uh, you, you can't eat or drink between the time you stop, between the time sunset, or the time you stop the meal until after half the lot. So, what happens if there's someone in the room who, uh, who, because of ill health, is required to get a diabetic? He's a diabetic. He has to get a break of the break of fast. So what does he do? The answer is he has to make a dollar. He's got to break or eat. So whatever does have to break the fast has to make a half dollar. Um, but um. The rest of us will do one of the four. Actually, we did two of the four. We did one, of course, make the distinction. Amad of Mikodesh was all. And we'll do a we'll, we'll do a larger form of that on Sunday night. After the fast is over, we'll then take a cup of uh, wine or beer and we'll uh, we'll make a, a, the full Abdallah on Sunday night. But on Saturday night, besides saying Amad of Mikodesh was all, let's do one more thing, and that is. 
said it before. Well, but why do we have to do fire on Saturday night? Under all circumstances, fire on Saturday night. So you do the fire, but you don't do the summer? You do so. Oh, man, thank you. So, all right, so you do the fire, but you don't do the summer? That's right. There's no summon. There's no, the summon is there to make you feel better, Shabbat is out. We're not feeling any better today. There's no summon. There's no spices. Um, and there's no wine. But there is fire. Why fire? Fire can only be done on Saturday night. Why? I'm going to make a dollar on Sunday night. What am I doing Sunday night? I'll take a cup of wine, pour a milk of beer, make a boy of beer, a cup of shot call. See, I'm out of the coat for all four times. I said, that's Sunday night. But Saturday night, why? Only Saturday night. Why? It would be a lot different. No? Well, I'm not sure about that. That's correct, right. because the Shabbat, you can't use it. But historically, Adam and Chava were created on the sixth day of creation. On that day, Adam was created, next hour, Chava was created. The next hour, Hashem told them, we're going to Gan Eden, the beautiful garden of Eden. The next hour, Hashem commanded them, go eat the forbidden fruit. The next hour, they got tempted by the snake, eat the forbidden fruit. The next hour, they ate the forbidden fruit. The next hour, they all got scared and covered themselves up. The next hour, Hashem decided, and they came to him and said, why did you do this a terrible thing? I told you not to do it. One little thing I should not do, and you should disobey. And we kicked out of God in. And the next hour, we kicked out of man. And the next hour, the sixth day was over, the Shabbat came. And the Shabbat, because it's the first Shabbat in history, was all the way up. So it was all the way up. So Adam and Chava did not experience that for the first time until the first time on Saturday night. When they saw that, they were part. They thought the sure God was going to destroy the world. God uh, created the world of light and destroyed the darkness. And so then Hashem saw Adam's fear and placed within inside him a creative ability that only humans have. But we can be almost like Hashem who created this stuff. The difference between Hashem and us is he creates something out of nothing. We need more material. And so he gave us two sticks. We rub the two sticks together and Adam created the fire. We commemorate this miracle every Saturday night. The wisdom that Hashem gave to Adam, to humanity, to be able to create stuff. So don't think the Thomas says he created electricity. He didn't. And, and he created electricity and fire and the whole, the whole suns in, in that particular time. In any event, another thing that's forbidden on the Shabbat is learning Torah. You know what I learned? You know what I learned Torah? How did you get that? Because Torah is understood as the most joyous experience anybody can have in the world. There's nothing more pleasant, more beautiful, more sweet, more delicious than learning. So what are you doing, Tishabo? Right! You see it? But you also have many to learn stuff regarding the Shabbat. You can learn the Book of Echo. Book of Ezra. We're going to read it Saturday night. In the Shul. When the Shabbat is over. You see, I'm not there. The Shul. I'm waiting to put on the table here. The Shabbat shoes. You see, I'm on the floor. And, um, I'm going to hold you As it's read, it should be read with a lot of uh, a crying tune, so to speak. And the crying tune, um, Here's a company often find that people who really understand the Hebrew uh, with, with a lot of tears. Um, but during the entire issue of day, night and day, you can learn or open up a book. There's an art scroll book on Tisha B'Av. There's an art scroll book on the Book of Lamentations. But there are five scrolls you have to know. Our most popular one, the joyous one, is what? <laughs> Esther, West, or right? But there are four others. This is the direct opposite of Esther. The joy of Purim is kind of distinctive to this misery and suffering of Bishop. And it's important for all of us to learn how to master our emotions and feel what we need to feel when we need to feel. And um, <clears throat> this book, written by Yerbiyo, Jeremiah Brown, as I said, 
is the book in which you have to have that sense of um, of, of, of uh, history, what happened is tried to put in place. And while we read it, we'll hear Sunday morning, or we, we, we will repeat it Sunday morning here in the service. And what we will do is also describe it, explain it, and learn it. So we are learning, but not George Bonsignor, or say it once uh, again. <clears throat> and so um, now that uh, we begin, uh, we, we have gone through a Saturday night. It's now time to um, to, uh, to to um, recognize that we have to get up Sunday morning and commence with the day. Uh, once again, what are the provisions for leniency in terms of the fast? When there are other fasts, if you're not feeling well, you can probably break it. You may have to break it. It should not so quick. It should not so quick. Um, unless you're really feeling very, very busy, you should try to fast. If it means lying down and sleeping the rest of the day, that's fine. Um, certainly, we tell people we have taught not to go to war on the show. Why? Well, it's this week, it's Sunday, anyway. Um, even if it's Monday, too, we try to whoever goes to work on the show, and no blessing on the Baha. He will not have a blessing of his work. Things will go on. He will not have a it's not gonna, you're not going to succeed. And um, some say, however, and if let's say you have a boss who's not Jewish, you don't understand, and if you lose your job, and you're allowed to go to work and you go after midday. Now, for those that like to smoke cigarettes, uh, most of you don't, I'm assuming. Uh, now there's no place to smoke. We used to smoke in the old days. I don't want to live my. Um, <clears throat> anyway, those of us that did smoke at the time, anyway, we were not permitted to smoke at Bishop until after midday as well. Um, <clears throat> yes, what about working inside of the shul, like preparing it for? Yeah, that, that's a that's, 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 that's great. Uh, yeah, uh, it's tough when you said that. No, why not? Tough is a sad prayer. Why don't we say it? Because we we intend anticipate that someday, that someday there's going to be a celebration of Bishop. And that's why we also recognize it as a potential holiday. Um, we do not put our tummy and still on Sunday morning. And um, we uh, have our service. First of all, on Sunday morning, everyone should go to their own show at uh, 8 o'clock, 8 30, whatever. We could be late. So, um, I mean, the men certainly go to Sunday morning without question. Okay. The women, if you're available and you want to go to another service early before you come in, it's a great idea too. What we can do here is more of a learning service, which is most for, for most of us who are beginners. This would be a, a great way. If you go to a regular school service, you probably will not be tailor made for beginners. So, therefore, you should try to go to the men should certainly go to school in the morning um, and, and pray the regular shakari uh, without the feeling. The women, if you can go, you should. If not, okay. But we're here by 10:30 Sunday morning, and we will then accomplish um, that the, the service through the learning process, which we will be able to achieve two things: one, an understanding, and b, an actual observance as well. Um, this your love, it's over Sunday night. Not at sunset, but 42 minutes later, as always. Always remember. So whenever an observance begins, begins at sunset and ends at nightfall. How much time do that between the two? 42 minutes. What about those 42 minutes? We call them dusk. What is dusk? Day, at night, who knows what it is? Nobody knows. So therefore, the rules of day don't apply and the rules of night don't apply. Meaning, you can't, you shouldn't be doubting Mincha after sunset, and you shouldn't be doubting Myers until after the 42 minutes. A lot of shuls that the rest of the regular week might have a a little bit earlier than the 42 minutes. And then if that's the case, you have to recite the Shemani style over again in the evening when it gets dark. Certainly Friday night. If you many of you how many people observed an early Shabbat this Friday? Anybody? And you do you start Shabbat early? Yeah. I see Shabbat shot early. You say you said uh, I'll see and it's daylight. How'd you do that? The answer is reciting Shemani style after it gets dark. Okay. 
Okay. <clears throat> now, it's Sunday night. And we're going to conclude the, uh, the dish about. And we'll wait for 42 minutes and uh, see how to eat. And then we can't eat just yet because we still need to do Abdallah. We had, didn't do it last night. So we do it twice. And so we, and it's kind of an interesting thing, you know, we come to the show on Saturday night, and all of a sudden, uh, you're, you're standing in the show, and the, uh, the leader of the show will pick up a, a candle. Uh, hold it up in front of everybody. Say Baruch Atah Hashem. Come on, go ahead, go ahead. Eish. One candle, and we can do the Shabbat. The rest of our Gala is on Sunday night. Then we'll make the bracha on the beverage. And um, the question is, what beverage? Can you use wine and grape juice? So some wine and say not to. Why? Because the night after Fishabov has some restrictions left. You know why? Because when the Fishabov destruction began and the fire hit the, the temple, destroyed the temple, uh, the fire uh, did so, uh, it started Fishabov midday. So even though we relax our restrictions on the day, but that's an actual fire start. But the day itself is considered the day that it started, that's the day we observe. But it continued on until the 10th. The fire and the burning continued on from the night till the 10th. And on the 10th, it stopped towards the day. So we continue some of our prohibitions until the next day. Except that this year, the next day, it's already T day because we've been, we, since we pushed off this Shabbat, we're actually doing this Shabbat at the 10th, Abba, not the 9th. So, therefore, you don't have to make any more extra stringencies, but the thing that's to do is to refrain from eating white, uh, meaning white, meaning, meaning, meaning what? <laughs> meaning wine. Yeah. Cook it, it did. It's fine cooking. It Probably. There's probably cannabis in here somewhere. Makes <laughs> 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 you goofy. Closer. I wouldn't know that. Anyway, um, so therefore, uh, when we make Abdallah on Sunday night, we'll make a bracha um, uh, on. And beer again, though uh, if you do if you do, if you do grape juice, it's also acceptable. But there's no candle and there's no spices. I'm out of the colors all once again, and the uh, and the shabbat is over. Why no spices? Uh, because the spices really are restricted to Saturday night as a way of saying goodbye to shabbat. And shabbat is saying goodbye to the rest. So why do we, why do we say I'm going to give a kodesh at all when it's not kodesh anymore? Um, because since Abdallah waited, so the extension of Kibusha, that limited level extended until that way. Let's put it this way. A uh, person forgot to say Abdallah Saturday night. Can you do it Sunday? Yeah. See, you can. you can do it on Tuesday. Why on Tuesday? Because the Shabbat's beauty extends on to Tuesday, like they say, you have to glow, right? And then by Wednesday, what are we doing? Prepare for next Shabbat. <laughs> it's always about Shabbat. And so um, the, the sense of, 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 uh, of doing the um, of doing the, the, the uh, Abdallah, um, you, you can do it go Tuesday. What happens if you're in Seattle? And see, in Seattle, Shabbat ends at 10.30 p.m. Sweet, thank you. I'm not. I guarantee you will never find me sleeping at that day. That doesn't mean you can call me that time. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee it. You can't. You're not sleeping. Um, but 
If, if let's say you can't, the kids are asleep or whatever, you make up the last Sunday morning. Would you have it? So yeah, but we make up the last now on Sunday night. And this up the last Sunday night is for the Shabbat that ended the night before, but the Kedusha extending until, that was a Kedusha really extends itself in some way or fashion until you completely close it off with the Havdalah. The Havdalah completely closed it. And put the stamp and seal of completion on it. Anyway, uh, can I uh, take a shower? Jay. Uh, uh, so don't say not to until midday of the next day. But this year it doesn't matter because it's already the next day. So by Monday morning, you can take a shave, take a haircut, shower. And these days, of course, we don't shower. Uh, I don't want to impose upon people all this, this heavy stickiness. Um, we are, of course, uh, people who live in a, a very indulgent society. We're all very, very, uh, uh, <laughs> very finicky, finicky, and then whatever, American Queen Buffs. And um, <laughs> there's no, there's no uh, real, uh, real struggling out over here. But, but I think, therefore, uh, you can, <clears throat> you can, um, uh, by, by Sunday night, but throughout this week, you can take lukewarm showers um, if you need to. Um, you should try to make do without soap, perhaps. But I think, I think that on Friday, for sure, you do a full, a full shower in honor of Shabbat. Uh, I just want to add a couple of other points. Uh, in the um, uh, on, on, on the back of the, the, the page that I gave out, um, uh, please turn to number 13. Similarities between Yom Kippur and Shabbat include the 25 hour all day fast and five afflictions. The difference is that Shabbat Yom Kippur, Yom Kippur is observed on Shabbat, but Shabbat is not. A difference again, Yom Kippur. You can't do work. Why can't you do work on Yom Kippur? Shabbat? Torah? Can you work on the Shabbat? If you have to, you have to. If you're going to lose your job. You can't, you can't lose your job. But if you try to do it after midday. Um, Yom Kippur is a day of joy. Simcha, when from sin, the Shabbat is a day of mourning. It was also based on the use of the tragedy. Um, <clears throat> number 14, beginning with the 17th of Thomas and Yom Kippur. The three week period of morning called Ben Amitsari. We're in that period now. Be very careful with what you're doing, how you're going. Try to avoid any any uh, excessive uh, things that can grow, grow with, 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 trauma, with uh, trauma or danger. Um, and uh, these last nine days, of course, uh, we're in that now including laundry as well. Um, obviously, laundry from the garments is actually permissible. Um, laundry for, if you have no other chain, I guess that's permissible too. Uh, what I did uh, before the nine days is simply take my freshman going to church, pour them, buy them, and then use this week, and just uh, put them on for a second or two, and put them on to use, and I crumple them up a little bit. And uh, then I was as sharp as it should be. Should remind people that um, there is a, a, a number 15 you can read a little bit on your own with regard to the Omer, and um, Number 10 uh, and, and number 11 and 12 regarding the 10th of today. But that you can do on your own uh, and so forth. One last point is to, um, is to recognize that uh, uh, if the tissue bubble is over and we commence with the rest of the month, uh, we do look forward to a, a better month. Um, during the time that we do the winter days, uh, every year, the 40 years that they had a sick people through the desert, everyone dug his own grave on Dishabov night. For those that woke up, which for those that didn't, into their graves. And so that's how the 40 people died over 40 years, all the whole people, anyone was done. Then they went in there to swell. Um, th this um, sense of, of uh, uh, of, of, of this about um, in the last year, 40th year, they did that again. Everyone got their own graves. Maybe they didn't know exactly what they didn't know exact calendars. I don't know if I'm really for 
You're the youngest person with there, so you know, right? Um, so uh, they dug the graves and nobody died. And so they said, We must have made a mistake in the town. Because in that town, they had people you know, move. So let's be maybe tonight's nice fish books. And they did it again, and again, and again, until by the 15th of the month, they saw that the moon was full and that fish book passed. It's up the 15th of August. Of the spies. The 15th of the Bible always became a day of joy for the Jewish people, though uh, it has lost its uh, importance during this, uh, during our time. Uh, people remember it, but there's no real observance for it. And we hope that Mr. Shem someday that uh, they will come back, uh, hopefully, in the coming of uh, <clears throat> The sense of, 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 of that, so as the 15th of the Bible is over, Fifty more days at the end of this month, hopefully a good month. Um, during these last fifteen days, we start preparing the high holidays. In Rosh Hashanah, the Kippur, the awesome day for Chuba, the most awesome day of the year. Um, now, um, you know we have partial this Thursday. We'll have for the service on Sunday. After that, there'll be no classes for three weeks. Uh, I'm on the way to New York for my granddaughter's wedding. There'll be uh, uh, a break throughout the uh, week of the 7th and the 14th and 21st. We'll probably resume on Sunday, the 28th of August. At that time, we will start preparing extensively for the high holidays. We'll go discuss all the laws of Rosh Hashanah, all the laws of the Kippur, all the laws of Sukkot, and all the laws of the all the laws of salvation. Um, and so um, uh, these last two events that we will have this week and Sunday, we can last for a few weeks. Uh, I think it's a good time for a break, summer, this and that. And um, it's also a good time to reflect about what we've learned, what we've accomplished, and what we're ready to do as we embark upon the journey of the high holidays, the days of all, the most important days of the year, for the show. Uh, so, um, uh, with that in mind, we need to really focus in. Uh, I may send out, not through Zoom, but email for everyone, 